Hello, hello, shalom, and welcome to my non-existent YouTube channel where I do whatever the fuck I want. If you want to keep on watching to see how I created this look, then stay tuned. Where's my phone? Oh. Hello and welcome to my non-existent YouTube channel, but I'm gonna start it out anyway. All of but zero people had asked me to do a makeup video. I just felt like doing it, cause yeah, that's me. I just feel like doing my own shit. Today, I'm just gonna do like, kind of like an everyday makeup thing. Um, I thought since I have this big knocker on my chin, I may as well kind of do some like little tips and tricks on how to cover something super red on your face or any like um pimple just anything you kind of want to cover up so i thought about doing that yeah i thought about just like i don't know talking on camera I just kind of do my makeup see what's going on i know i'm not the most popular person out there but i thought for the people that are interested why not so I'm actually just going to do my brows off camera and she's back. Okay, so I quickly did my brows. I kind of want to just mention that I don't always wear primer on a day-to-day -day look. I just feel like for me, since I have such dry skin, I don't really need primer. Some days I will if I feel like I'm really oily. If I do put on primer, I tend to use lately the Tatcha Silk canvas. I just got the mini one because again, I don't wear a lot of primer. So for today, I'll literally take a little bit like this. I'll press it into my skin. This primer is a pore primer, so it will fill in and blur out the pores in your skin. I don't have a lot of pores. The pores I do have are like in this area. So in around my nose, just underneath my eyes, kind of going on my cheek. And I'll just kind of press this in. This is not the primer to rub in. This is the primer to like press into your skin. So as I let the primer just kind of sit in the skin here, I'm going to block out my brows. So blocking out my brows is a technique I learned from one of my best friends, Tina. I honestly got into makeup because of her and I thank her every day for it because my makeup game has gotten a lot better <laughs> over the years. So I do my brow first. As you can see, I take my favorite concealer, which is the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear More Than Concealer in the shade 320 Porcelain. So I just take a very small dense angled brush, like very small, and then I will go in. So I'm going in underneath my brow first and just tracing along where my brow, at like the bottom of my brow. So I'm just literally tracing the concealer so it looks like so. And I find with this technique you're essentially just highlighting your brow and your brow bone at the top. So you're just highlighting the brow that you have done or that you have. I know a lot of my friends have great brows right now. And they don't really need to fill it in anymore. And I'm really really jealous because I have to fill in my brows constantly. Again, you're just tracing the bottom and the top of the brow. And then for the top of the brow, 
by the end it should look like this so to get this look I'm just going from the beginning of the brow just tracing all the way down and then I tend to just kind of like connect the two I connect it like a unibrow with the concealer um from there I just take my finger and I'll just and kind of blend out the concealer by the time everything's blended through it should kind of look like this from there I have this pimple that I want to get rid of so it's not so prominent in my makeup so I'm going to color correct it's not something I use on the daily it's literally only something when things like this happen where I just want to color correct the red and make it not so prominent in my makeup so this little trio palette is called Bella Pierre Cosmetics it's a pro concealer palette if you look on the fucking color wheel green and red are opposite of one another therefore they should cancel each other out and yeah <laughs> that's what I'm gonna be doing I'm not going to use a lot. You don't need a lot of color correcting. Boom. That's a lot, actually. Let's take my other finger and blend it out. It's kind of going to do my whole chin, actually. My chin gets the most pimples and the most redness. The redness is essentially gone and that's exactly what i wanted so i'm just gonna blend that out if i really 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 wanted to i could try and get this i've had this mark on my face forever like how long since i was like 18 maybe mm, maybe 19. if i really wanted to try to try and get this redness out okay now you're probably thinking okay she's gonna move on to foundation psych <laughs> nope i actually contour and um conceal slash highlight first before i put foundation on so how i came about this technique um was actually from a man named Scott Barnes, and he is a professional makeup artist. He is a celebrity makeup artist. One of his most famous canvases is the beautiful Jenny from the Block, aka Miss JLo, Jennifer Lopez. He kind of made the world believe Miss Jennifer Lopez's The Glow. Everybody wanted the JLo Glow. And I saw this video that Scott Barnes did with another beauty influencer on YouTube who is not doing videos right now, but her name is Miss Tati Westbrook. And yeah, he did her makeup with his techniques, his own brushes. He has a makeup line now, which is phenomenal, or as what I hear, I really, really, really want to try his makeup and his brushes. Oh, um, I am using Maybelline Superstay Multi-Use Foundation Stick in the color 330 Toffee Caramel, and I'm almost out. I love it though. Oopsies. And then I'm also using an e.l.f. small stipple brush just to blend this out. But anyway, so Scott I, uh, does this technique where he actually lays down the contour and conceal highlight first before the foundation. I just found with this one it makes the foundation or it just makes like 
your natural contouring come through like it almost looks a little bit more natural with doing this kind of technique that's what I have found and ever since then I'm just like I love it so much I've been doing it this way for so long that I don't know if I can like ever go back and I'm just blending it out but um if you have seen that video, number one, it's amazing. I love that video so much. And that video makes me want to buy all of his brushes, but I can't because I'm a poor child. His makeup techniques are just amazing. So next, after I have all of that blended out, I will go in with my concealer. And from here, I will go inner corner, dot around, This is a lot of concealer. If you don't think it is, you're using way too much. This goes a long way. So first I tend to So if you remember, I laid down that um, color corrector and now I'm putting concealer over top. So it won't have a green hue Next, I'm going in around my nose, on top of my nose, just to get that highlight a little bit more. The forehead. And the nice thing about blocking out our, my eyebrows beforehand and then blending it out is when this step comes around and I'm not trying, like, I'm not trying to blend the concealer close to my brow and like probably messing it up with my sponge just kind of illuminates that so I'm just blending it into the already blended area of my eyebrow and then having your concealer placed like this will create more of a upwards and then instead of like having it drag down like this your face is like it's like yeah just chef's kiss all these techniques I swear and then I try to keep the majority of the concealer around my nose area and then just kind of bring it around the eye a little bit but I'm not dragging it down I try not to at least this way, the contour of my nose will look more snatched. But yeah, this is essentially what she looks like when everything's blended out. You always find like one side of your face always looks better than the other. I always think the right side of my face looks better than my left. So yeah, everything here is pretty blended out. And then from here, since everything's blended out, I'll just go over it a little bit, maybe fix up some areas, boom. So that is my contouring and highlighting. Okay, once I have done my contour and highlight, it is now time for foundation. Um, so my favorite foundation, if you know me, this is literally like my ride or die foundation. I've been using it for years. Like, I'm already, like, oh yeah, I'm using the shade 403, I think, 405, 405, so I'll take a little bit, that's a lot, on my beauty sponge, just a tap, and then you're gonna essentially go over your whole face with it. And you'll see it's not as scary as what you may think. Your foundation is not going to cover up your contour. Because again, like your contour is still two to three shades darker than your foundation. So that's not going to cover it up. 
you're just gonna have a more natural look and a more natural shade to your face. I try and put as little product underneath my eyes as possible because we all know that it is like, we all know that our under eye is the most sensitive part of our face. Um, so I try and put as little product underneath my eye as possible. And then, yeah, I don't know, you just get more of a natural shade and a more natural look to your skin when you have everything underneath. And that way you're not layering so much on top of your foundation. And also, by using this technique, you're not using as much foundation as I found. And then I always do the neck, my nose. So if you can already tell, like, I just still have a natural shade to my skin. If you mess up on your concealer or your contour, it is so much easier to take that off than to have you mess up on your concealer contour on top of your foundation already. Because once it's on top, you're already redoing your whole face again. Like, it eliminates things like that. So yeah, just make sure everything is blended out. Make sure you're still bringing that down on your neck. No harsh lines. Okay, so once everything is blended out and I'm done all of my creams for my face, it is now time to move on to powders. So I'm using the Maybelline City Bronzer, Bronzer and Contour Palette, not palette, powder. And it's in the shade 100, because I'm white as So I'm just taking a angled brush. Make sure you tap off the excess. I'm just taking the angle, going right on top of where I'd contoured from before. Just creating more of a dynamic on my face. Go on my forehead. So wherever I put the contour on underneath, we're just gonna go over it with powder to heighten that color. And with this, you wanna try and like relax your face as much as possible. I know a lot of people are like, no. Cause you're creating a shape on your face with your makeup that your face doesn't do throughout the day or you're at work and you're like hi everybody my name is Janessa da, 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 da. my face is like this when I talk to people it's not like hi everyone so no <laughs> like you want to try and relax your face as much as possible when you're creating and then once I'm done, I'll just go over underneath my chin, loosely kind of go over my nose contour, just warm it up. It's hard not to do the face though on this side because like I'm reaching, but whatever. So from there, after I've done my bronze, I will go in with a setting powder. Now. spilled a ton of powder on my black pants. <sighs> As I was saying, with powdering my face, I hate baking. If people are like, oh, you can, you have to bake your face. Like, you have to do it. It's the only way your makeup will stay and the only way to set your face. No. That is not the only way. I take a loose, fluffy brush, kind of smaller so you can get more of a defined, so you know where your brush is going. And you can control the brush. I 
have dry to normal skin. So, the first time that I was baking my face, I hated it. Absolutely hated it. It made my skin and my under eye so cakey. It was not good at all. And then I just started, because I still liked to set my face at least with like at least some powder so my makeup doesn't move around throughout the day. So I just started doing it on a brush. Literally the littlest. And I'll just like lightly dust it over underneath my eyes. Go in where my nose and my smile lines are because that's where I crease the most. And it feels so much better than baking. Like that's literally all you need. I didn't bake, I just lightly dusted over my face wherever I laid down my um, foundation or more so my concealer. Like I just lightly go over it. But for me, like the first time I used Anastasia Beverly Hills, their classic um, loose setting powder, I literally put it underneath my eyes as a bake. And since I'm super fair and I'm a lot of my concealers are porcelain, it literally turned and oxidized my makeup. Like it turned yellow, like it had a yellow hue underneath my eye. And I'm not a yellow undertone. I'm very peach, very cool undertone. Unless you see otherwise. So hated it. Hate that powder. Never bought it again. Tried to love it because it was like, oh my god, Laura Mercier. Oh, did I say Anastasia Beverly Hills? No. The Laura Mercier powder. I could not do it. I didn't even, I don't even think I used the whole thing. Like, and I tried a lot of different powders and a lot of them were very drying. I tried the Maybelline Fit Me, the lightest one, and it still had that yellow hue, like, look underneath my eye and I hated it. And it's so weird because everybody loves either like the Laura Mercier powder or the Maybelline Fit Me powder for a drugstore dupe. Like everyone loves that powder and I just cannot do with it. The only powder that I truly, truly love right now are two. One, Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder in Vanilla. Okay, it's huge. You get so much product for your money. I think it might be a little, even a little cheaper. Love it. It's a little bit more hydrating under the eye. I say hydrating loosely, it's a powder. Like how hydrating can it be? But it doesn't feel cakey at all. And for something a little bit cheaper that I can only find in the States is a crowd favorite. The Cody Original Formula Air Spun Loose Face Powder in the shade Translucent Extra Coverage. I didn't believe everybody that they're like, oh my god, this powder is amazing. I was like, I'll be the judge of that. And this powder is actually amazing. <laughs> I love it. It doesn't oxidize my makeup. It sets perfectly. I don't bake with it. I'm sure it does great with baking. It's just not my cup of tea. And it's literally like six dollars, five dollars USD in the States. And I'm just like, how does Canada not have this yet? I just don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. I don't understand. Like, why can't you sell it in Canada? Okay, moving on. Now it's blush time. Love blush. I'm still on the hunt to find the perfect blush for me, but as of right now, I'm just trying to get rid of this blush. But it is the Milani. I broke it. It's the Milani Flowers of Love Rose Powder Blush Trio Palette. I broke the cover of it, <laughs> but it looks like this. And I literally just go 
in with my brush in all three colors. Like one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, I don't know. And then lately I've been trying to go a little bit more upwards with my blush placement. And kind of just like tap that in and brush it up. And kind of make it a little bit more blending into my contour. And then kind of more so in the temple of my cheek as well. Or the temple of my head, not my cheek. Yeah. So I just kind of, this way I'm not doing like the apples on my cheeks because everybody thought like, oh my god, it's blush. You need to do like the apples of your cheeks. Again. We're moving on to better things because lately when I do the apples on my cheeks like if I was to do it right there I feel like it just drags down my face but with this if you're going more so on the upper you're pulling your face up just giving myself a natural facelift through makeup so again I'm just tapping that in and going into the temple little bit on my nose because I think it's literally the cutest thing ever. Next is highlight. So today I will be using the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Blossom Glow 319B. This one has a like a pink tone to it. So here again focusing on the high points of my face. Every high point in a face will be different depending on what face shape you have. You might not, not necessarily have it all the way up here or on your cheeks. But I like it because I have big cheeks. Center of my nose. Tip. So if you're trying to figure out where your high points of your face literally just look on where the light touches your face so right now this side is highlighted this side is not right now i could see literally like my brow bone is touching the light it's getting the most light right now and then like literally right on top of where i put my blush and that's where i will be putting my highlight so just play around with lighting even go into natural light and just move around your mirror and figure out where the light hits your face and that will be your most natural high points of your face because not everybody will have a natural light on top of the brow not everybody will have the temple like some people have to put their highlight literally like right up here because that's where the light catches their face. So it all depends. All depends on who you are and what your face shape is. I'm kind of feeling extra spicy, so I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay Naked Illuminated in the shade Luminous. Looks like this, looks like so. It's very glittery and sparkly. Not a lot of people like glitter highlight, but I think just to top it off, I think it looks beautiful. Like, that was blinding. So before I move on to my eyelids, my eyeballs, I'm gonna go in with a setting spray just to set my face. And I'm obviously gonna go in with the Urban Decay All Nighter. Uh, this was my first love of setting spray. My favorite all-time setting spray is actually the Morphe Original Setting Spray. My favorite. Um, I just find it a little less drying than this one. This one I feel like my makeup is not moving. So for the people that don't know how to apply shadow, that's okay. I got you. This one here is a jelly shadow. Um, you apply it wet and it dries down. So this one will be a little bit more glittery, not little, it's pretty glittery, 
Uh, this one is called Mystical Jelly Much Shadow 20F5. So that's the shade I'll be using. It's very bronzy. Looks like this. It's very bronzy. I love it. I think it's literally like the easiest thing that I could do for my eyes. If I don't want a matte look, I kind of want more of an elevated look. But not too much effort into it. But I'll just take some off the top. Take some with my finger. I feel like it works best with a finger. Tina tried this shadow with a brush and it wasn't as pigmented as what she had hoped for. But I take it on my finger, looks like so. Stamp it all over my lid. And it looks like this. It's literally like the easiest thing that you can do. And it just elevates your look a little bit more. And that's all. <laughs> I'm going to put it all over my lid. All in my crease. And it kind of just gives like a wet appearance to it. And I love it. Like it's so pretty. And that's all I do. And it just dries down. So it like... And it will appear like this throughout the whole day. So for mascara, today I'm going to use the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara in the shade Blackest Black. I know, again, my friend Tina and her sister Rena, they both love this mascara. And I'm still trying to get a hold of it. Because I'm not used to it. The wand is pretty amazing. It does like separate your lashes pretty nicely. So I'm just trying to manipulate my lashes. That is the first layer. I think I'm gonna go in with the L'Oreal Voluminous. Looks like this. In the shade black. I'm just going to try do a second layer. This one I think just brings like the volume and the drama to the lash. So the telescopic one will like really separate your lash and then the voluminous one will just bring in that extra drama. I love how this mascara will actually separate your lashes. I do love that. But it just doesn't give me enough. So again, I'm going in with the Voluminous Mascara. There we go. Super easy. Super fast. Now, while I let that dry, um, for the bottom lashes, I'm going in with the Maybelline Lash Stiletto in the shade Very Black. So I'm just gonna let this dry quickly, so. But it looks so good. I love it. So my lashes are dried enough. So this little wand will be on my bottom lashes. Yeah. It's all done. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna do lips. And I'm just gonna go for a cute little neutral lip moment. Um, so again, my friend Tina, uh, she has a YouTube channel um, called Christina Iso, and she does makeup, she does vlogs, she does lifestyle things, um, and I was watching one of her videos last week and she had the Essence Stay 8 hour lip liner, this one, and it's like, it's retractable. And it's literally $3 at the drugstore. And it is so creamy. Like, I actually love this lip pencil. And it's very pigmented. Next, I'm just going to come in with the ColourPop Lip Oil 
Lux in the shade Bengal. I don't know. B E N G A L. Am I dumb? It's just a it's a lip oil. It has the lightest like shade. It's a lot thinner than a lip gloss, but you still get the same effects. And there you go. That is the lip combo of the day. Well, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, this makeup video, probably actually one of my first makeup videos that I've talked through. And I hope you maybe learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, I'm not, I'm not a makeup artist. I'm a makeup enthusiast, so yeah, just take everything that I say with a grain of salt. Again, there's so many videos out there in the world from professional makeup artists to beauty gurus um, out there on YouTube, and maybe you learned something here, maybe you didn't, and you just want to make fun of me, <laughs> but thank you for watching it this far, and I hope Everyone stay safe out there during this panoramic pandemic. Stay safe. And I hope to see you guys next time. Thank you.